The radical left have indicated very, very clearly their willingness to sacrifice the poor to the planet. Right? And this shocked me, actually, you know, because I could see a tension developing between the low energy prices that were clearly necessary to continue lifting the world's poor out of poverty, which you would think would be the primary concern of the left, right? In principle, they stand for the marginalized and oppressed. And, and in principle, perhaps primarily along the economic dimension, at least that was the classic left that, that, had, that we had contended with, dealt with for you know, a century in the West. But now we saw on the energy and environment front that the nature worship that's characteristic of the followers of Ehrlich, let's say, will trump any concern whatsoever for the inhabitants of Africa, to, to, to point to one place in particular, right? Because the Africans are energy poor, as are the Indians, and to some degree the Chinese, although they're rectifying that very, very rapidly. Has the radical left gone too far in their environmental agenda, sacrificing the poor to save the planet? In this thought-provoking video, Jordan Peterson delves into the clash between environmentalism and economic progress, highlighting a troubling trend that has emerged in recent years. In summary, this video offers a critical examination of the current environmental movement, advocating for a more balanced approach that considers both human welfare and environmental sustainability. Peterson call for practical solutions that ensure reliable energy, reduce poverty, and genuinely improve the planet, challenging the impractical and often hypocritical stance of the left. And so it seems to me that there's an unbelievable opportunity for cl the classic liberals who are willing to divorce themselves from the idiot progressives and the conservatives to say, no, look, if you want a real policy to, to alleviate poverty, there isn't anything that you can do that even comes close to the provision of cheap energy by whatever means. Now you want to keep the pollution under control, but and then if the and then if it is actually the case that increasing wealth at the bottom decreases environmental load, which seems to be the case, or at least you can make that argument and credibly, then well, that's a pretty that's a win-win solution for everyone. No more poverty and a, and a wiser populace with regards to environmental issues from the bottom up instead of the top down. That's a good vision. There's absolutely no way that these developing countries where most of the people are, are, are going to be able to withstand the pressure from the population with regards to the necessity of economic growth. And so, well, and we already saw this, Premier Smith, we saw this in Germany. The Germans took this demented tilt towards green environmentalism and all that's happened is that their electricity is five times as expensive as it should have been and they pollute more not least because they have to burn lignite that's how it's turned out lignite for god's sake the most polluting form of coal because they shut their nuclear power plants down which was utterly insane and so what's happened in germany is is they're more dependent on like Putin, for example, their energy costs have spiraled out of control, they're deindustrializing as a consequence, and they pollute more. So like, the only way that's a victory is if all you wanted to do to begin with was cause as much havoc and disruption as possible. Well, there's also, there's also a shadow side to that, just like there was a shadow side to the fossil fuel industry's presumption that if they marketed themselves in a green way, that that would be a net economic advantage to them. That, that all presumes that the people that you're contending with are playing a fair game. And I actually don't believe that that's the case with much of the environmental nonsense. I, f I feel that way, for example, when I go into a hotel and I see signs everywhere telling me that they're only going to do laundry every two days because they're saving the planet. And that isn't why they're not doing laundry. They're not doing laundry because it saves money and fair enough, but they can cover that with this claim of environmental virtue. And so many of the people who signal, virtue signal on the environmental side, and this is particularly true in the political realm on the left, are doing that not because they care for the environment in the least, not if it came to actually making personal sacrifices for doing something about it. They want to be seen to be the saviors of the planet without doing any of the work, any of the background work, any of the research, any of the industrial uh, innovation that would be necessary to carry it out. They want to be seen as experts without noting, for example, well, how the hell are you going to interconnect all the world's power grids together? What are you, wh where are you going to get the wire? Where are you going to get the metal? 
And isn't it a problem? Not only that wind works 10% of the time, but when it doesn't work, you have to have a parallel energy system in place. And if that's not nuclear, it has to be fossil fuels. And so then instead of having just a fossil fuel grid, let's say for the electrical, for our electrical electrified economy, you have to have a wind and a solar grid plus a fossil fuel grid. Well, how in the world could anyone with any sense whatsoever think that that constituted an improvement? Especially when you also decide, let's say, to take nuclear out of the equation, which is the last thing you'd do if you actually cared about carbon dioxide production. And so my, for me, it's mostly, it's not even, there is an element of care with regards to environmental sustainability, but there's a much larger element of being seen to be, to be seen praying in public, to put it bluntly, to be seen virtue signaling with no effort. And so that NDP in particular are good at that. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content.